When I was a kid, magnetic levitation trains, maglevs, were going to be the future. China has just changed the future of travel forever. Imagine a train so fast, it makes airplanes nervous. A machine that doesn't just move, it flies on the ground. We're talking about a staggering 620 miles per hour. That's not just transportation, that's a revolution. For decades, we believed the skies were the ultimate highway, but now the ground itself is ready to rival the heavens. Picture boarding your morning commute and feeling like you've just stepped inside a rocket, yet smoother than sitting in your own living room. This isn't science fiction. This is happening right now. And today, we're uncovering the unbelievable story behind the train that could change the world forever. Decades ago, when the first high-speed trains appeared in Japan, people thought they had seen the future. The famous Shinkansen bullet train changed the way millions traveled, gliding at over 200 miles per hour. For years, Japan owned that reputation, the undisputed leader of high-speed rail. China, at the time, was still catching up. Its trains were slower, less reliable, and not nearly as advanced. But quietly, in government offices and engineering labs, a radical idea took root. What if trains could not just compete with planes, but defeat them? What if land travel could be faster than flying? The idea sounded absurd. Engineers were ridiculed. Skeptics laughed it off. After all, trains run on tracks, heavy, mechanical, limited by friction. Planes soar through the skies at near the speed of sound. How could anything rolling on steel compete with that? And yet, the answer lay in a technology as strange as it is brilliant. Magnetic levitation. At first glance, maglev, short for magnetic levitation, sounds like science fiction. A train that doesn't touch the ground, that doesn't have wheels, that floats. But that's exactly what China's new maglev does. Instead of steel wheels grinding against metal rails, the train is suspended by powerful superconducting magnets. The magnets in the track push against the magnets in the train, forcing it to hover several inches above the rails. No contact, no friction, just floating motion. And once friction disappears, speed is no longer bound by the old rules. Traditional trains waste enormous energy just overcoming resistance between wheels and tracks. Maglev trains, by contrast, glide almost effortlessly. It's like comparing dragging a brick across sand versus sliding it across ice. One requires brute force, the other barely any effort at all. This breakthrough opened the door for something astonishing. A train that could accelerate not just to 200 miles per hour, not even 300 or 400, but all the way to 620 miles per hour. That's faster than most commercial jets in service today. But here's the real marvel. While planes fight turbulence, air resistance and weather, the maglev slices forward in silence. Inside, passengers don't feel the rattle of wheels or the roar of engines. They don't hear the grinding of brakes or the vibration of tracks. Instead, it's as if they're gliding on air, because, in a sense, they are. Let's put this speed into perspective. A typical car on the highway cruises at about 65 miles per hour. This train? Nearly 10 times faster. A Boeing 737, the workhorse of global air travel, typically cruises around 575 miles per hour. This train, faster still, by nearly 50 miles per hour. A flight from Beijing to Shanghai currently takes about 2.5 hours. The maglev train could, in theory, cut that down to just over an hour. Think about what that means. Cities separated by hundreds of miles suddenly feel like neighboring suburbs. Business trips, vacations, family visits, all transformed. You could live in one city, work in another, 
and return home the same evening without ever stepping into an airport. And here's the irony. Despite its breathtaking speed, the maglev avoids many of the hassles of flying. No two-hour security lines, no turbulence, no cramped cabins. You step on, sit back, and glide. But achieving this was anything but simple. Behind the effortless grace of this train lies one of the most difficult engineering projects in modern history. Building a train that defies friction and races faster than planes was not just about ambition. It was about overcoming challenge after challenge. At 620 miles per hour, even the slightest vibration could spell disaster. Imagine a coffee cup on a table during an earthquake. That's how unstable early designs were. Engineers had to refine the train's aerodynamic shape, testing it in wind tunnels for years until the body cut through air with razor precision. Keeping a massive train hovering steadily above tracks requires magnets of immense power. Early models overheated, cracked, or simply failed at high speeds. The solution came from superconducting magnets, materials cooled to ultra-low temperatures where resistance drops to nearly zero. These magnets provided the strength without the meltdown. Even with the perfect train, if the track isn't flawless, disaster looms. At 600 plus miles per hour, a misalignment of just a millimeter could derail the system. Chinese engineers had to build some of the most precise rail infrastructure ever attempted, inspecting each segment with microscopic accuracy. When moving at such speed, air itself becomes an obstacle. Passengers could feel pressure changes in their ears, similar to flying. To counter this, engineers created an interior pressure system that mimics natural conditions, keeping passengers comfortable no matter how fast the outside world blurs by. Every failure brought new lessons. Every setback forced innovation. Billions of dollars were poured into research, and each year, China edged closer. Until, finally, success. The world's first commercial train capable of reaching airplane speeds. The unveiling of China's maglev didn't just shock travelers. It rattled governments. It jolted industries. It started a new race. Japan, long the leader in high-speed rail, suddenly found itself overtaken. Its Shinkansen, once the pride of the nation, looked almost slow by comparison. Engineers in Tokyo scrambled to accelerate their own maglev project, hoping to reclaim their crown. The United States, with one of the slowest major rail systems in the developed world, woke up to a harsh reality. High-speed rail had always been too expensive or too complicated for American policymakers. But with China leaping ahead, suddenly projects in California and Texas began to look less like fantasies and more like necessities. Europe, home to the TGV in France and the ICE in Germany, faced its own reckoning. Proud of their high-speed systems, Europeans now confronted the fact that China's trains weren't just faster, they were cheaper to operate, cleaner for the environment, and could reshape global competitiveness. In short, China hadn't just built a train, it had set the bar. And now every major economy is scrambling to meet it. Of course, speed is only part of the story. Step inside China's maglev, and you'll find something just as impressive. Comfort. The interior feels more like a luxury hotel than a train. Wide corridors, expansive windows, seats modeled after business class cabins with soft cushions, adjustable headrests, and personal screens. Charging ports, touch panels, and climate controls at your fingertips. Even at 620 miles per hour, the ride is astonishingly smooth. No rattling, no sudden jolts, just a silent, effortless glide. Look out the window, and the world streaks by in surreal clarity. Yet inside, you barely feel the motion. Many passengers describe it as a spa-like experience, relaxing, quiet, almost unreal. 
cafes, lounges, pristine restrooms, meticulous cleanliness. Every detail reinforces the sense that this isn't public transport. It's the future of travel, reimagined. But perhaps the maglev's greatest strength isn't speed, or comfort, or even prestige. It's sustainability. Airplanes guzzle jet fuel, pumping carbon dioxide into the sky. Cars, even electric ones, clog roads and demand massive infrastructure. The maglev? It runs on electricity, much of it renewable. It emits no smoke, no fumes, no greenhouse gases. It's not just a train, it's a weapon against climate change. And in a world racing against time to cut emissions, that may be the single most powerful reason nations are watching so closely. Ask those who've ridden it, and their stories border on the surreal. The rush of acceleration, the blur of the outside world, the serene calm of the cabin. Some admit they felt nervous at first, unsure what it means to be racing across the earth faster than a jet. But the fear quickly melts away, replaced by awe. One traveler described it perfectly. It doesn't feel like moving. It feels like the world is moving past you. And that might be the greatest achievement of all. Not just speed, not just technology, but an entirely new way of experiencing motion itself. So, will this be the future of travel? The answer seems almost inevitable. As costs fall and technology spreads, maglev systems will expand. Airports may become less crowded, short flights may disappear, and trains may reclaim dominance in ways we haven't seen since the 19th century. China has taken the first leap. Japan, Europe, America and others are close behind. And for the rest of us? The age of sitting in traffic, of waiting in endless airport lines, of noisy and polluting flights. It may soon feel as outdated as the horse and buggy. Because the future, it seems, doesn't just fly. It floats. The maglev is more than a train. It's a symbol. A symbol of human ambition, of technological rivalry of the eternal desire to go faster, further, and better. It proves that what once seemed impossible can, with enough vision and determination, become real. And so, the next time you hear the roar of a jet overhead, 